Hey everyone, today I wanna to dive into a topic that's as controversial as it is fascinating. Invasive species and what we should and shouldn't do about them. From gray squirrels in Europe to marbled crayfish taking over ecosystems and even mute swans causing havoc in the US. Invasive species aren't just a minor inconvenience. They're a huge problem for biodiversity, ecosystems, and even our economies. And trust me, trying to tackle these issues without the right knowledge can cause more harm than good. So let's break it all down and talk about what's really going on. Let's kick things off with the gray squirrel, one of the most infamous invasive species in Europe. These cute, fluffy creatures might seem harmless, but they've wreaked havoc on local ecosystems, particularly in Italy and the UK. The gray squirrel was first introduced to Italy in 1948, starting with just a few pairs released in parks. At the time, it seemed like a harmless idea, but things quickly spiraled out of control. Fast forward a few decades, and gray squirrels have displaced much of the native red squirrel population. How? By outcompeting them for food, stealing resources, and spreading diseases like the squirrel pox virus. Gray squirrels are immune to the virus, but it's deadly for red squirrels, wiping them out within weeks of infection. It's not just about competition. This is a fight for survival. In the late 1990s, Italian scientists proposed an eradication plan to stop the spread of gray squirrels and protect the red ones. But animal rights activists took them to court, halting the project for years. By the time the legal battle ended, it was too late. The gray squirrel population had grown so much that eradication was no longer practical. Today, experts predict gray squirrels will spread across much of continental Europe, threatening biodiversity on a massive scale. The problems with invasive species go beyond environmental damage. They're also costly. Take the gray squirrels in the UK, for example. These animals strip bark from trees, making them vulnerable to diseases and pests. This damages commercial woodlands, particularly hardwood trees, and reduces the value of timber. Farmers and forestry professionals are left footing the bill, all because of an invasive species that was introduced by humans. Let's shift gears and talk about well-meaning but misguided attempts to help animals. In 2015, animal rights activists in Dublin decided to free lobsters from a Chinese restaurant tank, releasing them into the sea. While their intentions might have been good, their actions were anything but helpful. Dublin's waters are far colder than the lobster's natural habitat, and the animals likely didn't survive for long. If they did survive, there's another problem. They might disrupt the local ecosystem as an invasive species. A similar story involves marbled crayfish, a type of freshwater crustacean that reproduces without mating. These creatures were introduced to European waterways after pet owners released them, thinking they were doing the right thing. Instead, these crayfish have spread rapidly, outcompeting native species and causing ecological chaos. In Madagascar, their population has exploded, threatening the island's unique freshwater ecosystems. Now let's talk about mute swans in the US. These elegant birds were originally brought over from Europe in the 1800s to decorate parks and private estates. Over time, some of these swans escaped or were released into the wild. With no natural predators and plenty of resources, they've multiplied rapidly. Today, mute swans are considered one of the most aggressive types of waterfowl in the world. Mute swans don't just look graceful, they're also voracious eaters. They consume massive amounts of aquatic vegetation, disrupting the food chain and leaving little for native species. They also attack other birds, destroy nests, and even kill chicks. To make matters worse, during mating season, a single pair of mute swans can take over up to 10 acres of water, pushing out other wildlife. In Maryland, efforts to control mute swan populations have faced significant pushback from animal rights groups. These activists argue that the birds deserve protection, despite being classified as an invasive species. Meanwhile, biologists warn that failing to manage their population will lead to long-term ecological damage. It's a classic example of how emotions can clash with science and wildlife conservation. Here's the thing, managing invasive species is a delicate balancing act. On one hand, we have a responsibility to protect native ecosystems and biodiversity. On the other hand, we want to treat animals humanely. The key is finding solutions that address both concerns. Take feral pigs in Texas, for example. These animals cause millions of dollars in damage each year, destroying farmland and spreading diseases. 
But when conservationists wanted to cull the population, they collaborated with animal rights advocates to ensure the process was as humane as possible. They agreed on the methods of euthanasia and disposal, and they communicated the reasoning behind the cull clearly. The result? A plan that balanced public safety, environmental health, and animal welfare. The gray squirrel story teaches us an important lesson. Early action is critical. Invasive species are much easier to control when their populations are small. Delays, whether caused by bureaucracy, legal battles, or public opposition, only make the problem worse. By the time the gray squirrel population exploded in Italy, eradication was no longer feasible. Now Europe is bracing for the long-term consequences. Another takeaway is that not all rescue efforts are helpful. Releasing animals into unfamiliar environments can backfire, harming both the animals and the ecosystem. Before taking action, it's crucial to understand the potential consequences and consult experts. The best solutions come from collaboration between conservationists, animal rights activists, and the public. By working together, we can address invasive species in ways that are effective, ethical, and informed by science. For example, programs to manage feral pigs or mute swans can succeed when all parties agree on the goals and methods. At the end of the day, protecting wildlife isn't just about saving cute or iconic animals. It's about preserving ecosystems, supporting biodiversity, and ensuring that future generations inherit a healthy planet. That requires tough decisions, careful planning, and a willingness to listen to experts. Thanks for joining me in exploring this fascinating and often challenging topic. If you've ever wondered how to help animals or manage invasive species, I hope this gave you some insight into the complexities involved. Let me know your thoughts in the comments, and don't forget to like and subscribe for more stories about the incredible and sometimes complicated world of wildlife. See you next time.